The next song insight video is going to be Stand By Me. So I've always really liked this song since the first time I heard it in John Lennon's Walls and Bridges album. And for the longest time I thought he wrote it, but it was written, I think, by Ben E. King. So I'm going to confirm that. Wikipedia is going to be our first stop to see who actually wrote this song. I think it's Ben E. King. Um, all right. It, it was a song originally performed in 1961 by Ben E. King. Oh, and it was written by King. Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. That's interesting. These two guys also wrote um, the uh, Elvis's Hound Dog, or at least kind of rewrote Hound Dog into the song that we all know as the Elvis song. So Jerry Lieber, Mike Stoller showing up with Ben E. King on this awesome song. Okay, so I want to learn the chords in this song, so I'm going to type Stand By Me chords, and the first hit, as always, is Ultimate Guitar. So Stand By Me chords by Ben E. King. It's not Benny, it's Ben E. King. And this version one has the most ratings. So we're going to look at this, and it says that it's in the key of A, and it basically has four chords. So A, F sharp minor, D, and E. Let's check it out and see how it works. Like a lot of songs, they mention, or they say the capo of the second fret, and they're just, again, bending over backwards to accommodate fingering to make sure you can play open fingering, open chords, which is nice. It's easy to play open chords, but if you want to play it on the keyboard, um, then you're, you can't, there's no capo for the piano, right? So. Might as well learn the chords as they sound with the piano. So it's really in the key of A, so I'm gonna transpose this up two semitones, since that would be two frets on the guitar, and see how it sounds. So in the night. And then it's the same chord progression again and again. This is like super easy. Uh. Okay, so let's try it on the piano to see where how that all sounds. not be the best inversion. So now the next step is to kind of figure out what inversion makes the most sense. Because uh, it might be easier to kind of move your fingers in one inversion versus another. I'm gonna start up here. So that's one of the things that sounds nice is there's this kind of like step motion. So it's
that sounds nice. It's because you've got the tonic, the one. Well, I can tell it's a tonic. So let's look at the modes table to really like look at this more closely. Four chords. We've got A, and the song keep it starts with A D D D D D D D D D D A. So it goes to A A A A. A is like uh, the the tone home bass. So we're gonna put A here, and if A is one, then and we're in the key of A, then F sharp minor is the next chord. So uh, if we had the A major scale, we have A. B, this is this major scale up here, C sharp, D, and then five is E, F sharp, G sharp, and then A again. So A is one, F sharp minor is in the sixth position, so we're gonna put that over here. The next chord in the song is D, which is the D position. And then the next chord in the song is E, which is uh, in the uh, five position. So A is a major one, so it could be Ionian, Lydian, or Mixolydian. D is a major four, so it could be Ionian, Dorian, or Mixolydian. So, so far we're down to Ionian or Mixolydian, or our contenders. Then E is a major five, E major is a major five, so we have Ionian, or Lydian, but Lydian already got ruled out, uh, so we know that it's we have a major one, a major four, a major five, and then a minor six. So we are in the Ionian mode for the song "Stand by Me." So now I'm going to print this song and diagram out the harmonic movement because it's one thing to find out what the chords are. The first step is the chords. The next step is to take inventory of how the chords fit into this key. Then the next step is to see why the chords are moving as they are within harmonic space. I'm going to explain what this diagram is about. So here I drew out in harmonic space the key of A, A Ionian, and what we're looking at here is really just the notes in intervals of a third, so tertian intervals. So it's a loop of tertian intervals starting at the tonic, going up to the three, and then a tertian interval from C sharp is E. Tertian interval up from E is the seven, the seven note, and then to B, D, F sharp, A. So if we just looked at these three notes, this is A, C sharp, E, that's the A major chord. Then C sharp, E, G sharp, those in sequence are the minor three chord. E, G sharp, B, that's the five chord, that's the E major chord, and so on. So it's really just a loop of the chords, and we could just represent each chord by its root note. So if I'm referring to the A major chord, it's really made up of these three notes, but just referring to this as the A chord, I'm gonna diagram out the flow of chords. So we've got, we start at the one, A, and we go to the six chord, the minor six chord, F sharp minor, and then up to D, the four chord, over to E, the five chord, and then back to A, the one chord. And really this loop is the entire song. That's the chord progression throughout Stand By Me. This chord progression is surprisingly simple. For how beautiful the song is, it's the same four chords repeated again and again, and so much of the variety that happens in this song is through the melody. You have a variety in, you know, when the night has come and the land is dark. That's the, the verse, and that's the melody over that chord progression in the verse. And then, stand by me, oh, stand by me. And so the, the chorus gets a different melodic line over the same chords, but that's why the song keeps moving forward because you have variety as you progress through the song. So I'm gonna flesh this out, explain in more detail in the song Insight video.